we're back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So the event we've all been waiting for happened yesterday, the Bitcoin halving. So it went from 900 Bitcoin being produced per day to 450 and nobody knew what was going to happen. There were rumors it was going to fucking go to the moon beforehand. There was rumors it was going to fucking dump. Nobody knew. And what did it do? Pretty much nothing. (laughs) Pretty much fuck all. It went from like 61 to 63 or something like that. But now it's done. No more speculation. The fucking halving is over and done with. There's not going to be another one for four years. But now we see how it plays out over the next six to eight months. This could be the start of go time. It might drop a little bit from here and then spike. Who knows? No one actually knows what's going to happen in the short term. Short term is too difficult to predict. Long term, it's a bit easier. But I'm glad it's over and done with for now. There's no more fucking hypotheticals. It's done. Now we just need to see how the market reacts to it. Hong Kong approved the Bitcoin ETF. So that should be online in a couple of weeks. We've still got the American ETFs. We've got to see what the miners do over the next few months, 18 months. Who knows? Got to see what the economy does. Are the US going to continue printing a trillion dollars every 100 days? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. I'm reading a book at the moment and it's so fucking interesting. It's called When Money Dies, The Nightmare of Deficit Spending, Devaluation and Hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany. It's basically a history lesson on what happened to Germany after the First World War and their economy and the hyperinflation their currency went through and how fucked up it was. And this is like an extreme example. Weimar, Germany, after World War I, they had reparations to pay. France was absolutely fucking them. France had their fucking foot on Germany's throat because France didn't want Germany to become a power again. So they were trying to keep them fucking broke. Anyway, it's also fucking the German politicians were just like print, 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 print. But it was a fucking bleak time for Austria and Germany after that First World War. And I'm not entirely sure how the First World War really kicked off and what the circumstances were. But I know Franz Ferdinand, well, at least I know because I read it in this book, he was assassinated by a Bosnian crew. I need to look into the First World War because it seems like the First World War was the inflection point that has echoed through everything up until today. Nothing ever got resolved after the First World War. To fund the war, all the countries went off the gold standard and just started printing money, and they never went back on the gold standard after World War I. They pretended to, and they tried to, but they just inflated everything too much. They'd put too much currency into the system that they couldn't revalue gold. Otherwise, everyone would have gone broke. And they couldn't fund the war through taxation because no one wanted to be in it. So I'm going to fucking look into the First World War because that seems to be where it all began. But anyway, the disaster that was going on in Austria and Germany after the First World War, you start to look at Germany a little bit different. Like they were fucking being crushed in the years after World War I. And the repression really fucking set the environment for someone like a Hitler to come along. But anyway, that's got nothing to do with anything. A lot of the things I'm reading in this book, you can see them playing out now in the world economy. It's actually crazy. It's pretty much basically the same thing. The politicians, to pay for everything, just printed money until they couldn't print anymore. Eventually, people just stopped using the currency. I'm like 100 pages in at the moment, so I don't know the full fucking story yet. But you can just see, it's exactly the same 
as what they're doing now. Pretty much every country on earth. And people didn't know what was going on at the time because they'd never been through a currency crisis, a hyperinflation event. So they were holding on to their money while everything was getting fucking crazy expensive and they were selling their tangible goods like pianos, gold, food, all that sort of shit to get the currency because they were being told that the currency will gain value later on down the track. And then month after month, year after year, it continued losing more and more like crazy amounts until I guess I'm not up to that part yet. It was like a trillion dollars or a trillion marks for a loaf of bread. Myanmar, Germany was more a high speed train crash. What's happening now, like in the US, Australia, everywhere is more like a cruise ship or a container ship crashing into a bridge. (laughs) real fucking slow but the damage is epic so that's a very interesting book if you want to fucking get into the weeds of it and then last night i went and watched civil war alex garland i didn't even know he wrote it but he's the guy that wrote the beach and you're just watching civil war it's basically fucking texas and california have broken off from the USA, they've seceded from the Union, and it's just chaos there. And you're watching it, and you're like, well, that looks like it probably has more than like an 80% chance of happening. You're not watching Civil War and going, that could never happen in the US. There's no chance of that happening. You're like, hold on a second. Is this a documentary? Because it doesn't seem that far away. And legitimately, I was watching it going, the only thing that can stop this from happening, because it seems inevitable, is Bitcoin. You have to take all of your energy out of this existing, dying, diseased system and put it into the new system. The truthful, honest system. And then the foundation of society, because the system you're now operating on is based on truth, then that spreads. It spreads into every other aspect of life. The system that we're living in at the moment, the foundation, the money, the language that we all operate on is based on a theft. It is based on nothing, a lie. So everything that sprouts from that system is a lie, is a falsehood. I'm basically just parroting what Jeff Booth says, but it's true. In the old system, the only thing you can really do is turn on each other. And that's what's going to happen unless you withdraw yourself from that system. The game's over in that system anyway. If you give it your energy, you're just extending its life. Withdraw yourself and choose truth. Anyway, I didn't know we were going there. I didn't know we were going Bitcoin is truth today. But you have to get it in like once a week or once every two weeks. Anyway, fucking that'll do it for tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.